the Yeti, a legendary entity, part man, part beast, said to inhabit the mighty Himalayan mountains, striking fear and awe into all who chance to encounter it. James Stewart, a superstar actor who left an indelible mark on Hollywood and continues to win the hearts of viewers everywhere. One would be hard-pressed to find two figures less related, yet, as we shall see, the stories of these seemingly unconnected titans of popular culture do, in fact, intersect. Not in the movies, but in real life. I'm Tyler Martin, and this is Monsters from the Id. Since time immemorial, tales of wild men, creatures covered in hair, standing on two legs, not quite human, not quite ape, have featured prominently in the traditions of cultures around the world. Even today, for many indigenous or culturally isolated peoples, these beings are as real as the sky, the trees, and all the ordinary living things that surround them. This point of view originates in their own experiences and histories, largely unaffected by such notions as scientific inquiry and discovery, things that have, for good or ill, propelled the growth of what we call the modern or Western world. It was not until relatively recently that these stories came to the broader attention of that modern Western world. After a steady trickle of accounts spanning several decades, in 1951, the so-called Abominable Snowman, or Yeti, exploded into the public consciousness when British mountaineers Eric Shipton and David Ward, while surveying possible routes to the summit of Mount Everest, came upon a set of strange tracks. A photograph, apparently depicting a tremendous, very human-like footprint in the snow, caused a sensation among the world press, igniting a surge of interest in the topic. Of course, for the local inhabitants, this was the track of the Yeti, of which they had long been aware. But for the developed world, it was something new and exciting, a mystery to be solved. Enter Texas oil magnate and adventurer Tom Slick, a larger-than-life figure who used his considerable riches to fund a number of scientific and or glory-seeking pursuits. In 1958, Slick was sponsoring an expedition to track down the creature. A member of the team, Peter Byrne, came upon a potential bombshell in Nepal's Pangboche Monastery, a sacred relic said to be the mummified hand of a yeti. Byrne asked the monks if he could borrow the relic, but was refused, as such an act was thought to bring misfortune to the temple. Determined to get to the bottom of things, Slick conspired with Byrne and London primatology professor William Osmond Hill who resolved to obtain, if not the full hand, at least a single finger. Hill produced a severed human hand, itself of indeterminate origin, from which a portion could be removed and used as a replacement for the supposed yeti finger. Byrne returned to Pangboche and succeeded, through a monetary donation to the temple, in completing the exchange and obtaining the needed digit. The next step in the plan was to transport the finger to London for examination at Hill's laboratory. But here, the plan ran into a hitch. British customs laws regarding the importation of human or potentially human remains was likely to prove an insurmountable obstacle. Luckily, Slick had a friend. Hollywood treasure James Stewart and his wife Gloria, acquaintances to Tom Slick, happened to be on vacation in nearby India at the time and, at Slick's request, agreed to smuggle the finger into the United Kingdom. Byrne met with the Stewarts in Calcutta and handed over the appendage, which was then tucked away in Gloria's lingerie case. Counting on the well-established British regard for propriety and discretion, they reasoned that the customs officials would refrain from rifling through a lady's undergarments. However, according to Byrne, when the Stewarts arrived in London, the case was nowhere to be found. Unable to determine its whereabouts, the couple spent a very uneasy few days until a British customs official came calling at their hotel, the missing luggage in hand, locked and unopened. While entertaining the young man with tea and conversation, they were assured that, indeed, a British customs official would never open a lady's lingerie case. 
The gambit had paid off, and the finger was successfully delivered to Hill for analysis. Hill, using the knowledge and means available to him at the time, judged that the hand was of hominid origin, possibly Neanderthal. In the 1990s, the popular American television program Unsolved Mysteries ran a story about the hand and conducted a DNA test, concluding that it was near human. To some fanfare, a more recent examination determined that the finger in question was, in fact, human. Shortly after the Unsolved Mysteries broadcast, the hand proper was stolen from the temple, evidently vanishing into the obscurity of illicit trade, making further analysis of the full sample impossible. As we have seen, hard evidence for the Yeti has proven elusive to say the least, leading most to dismiss the phenomenon as so much nonsense, pure myth or misidentification. But it remains a tantalizing mystery for those of us who choose to believe that the world is still capable of harboring amazing secrets. Thus, the saga of Jimmy Stewart and the bootleg Yeti finger draws to a close. Now, some of you may understandably be a bit skeptical. After all, why would a beloved Hollywood icon become involved in such a bizarre caper? But you may be assured that, according to multiple sources, including the BBC, these events did, in fact, take place. Look for that story and other relevant links in the description below. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of the Pangboche hand, please contact Mike Alsop at returnthehand.com. Perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. Once again, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.